اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری ویسر لی امری وحل لقدتا من لسان یفقہ قولی الحمدللہ اللذی جعلنا من المتمسکین بولایت سیدی و مولای علی ابن ابی طالب الحمدللہ اللذی هدانا لہذا وما کنا لنہتدی لولا ان هدانا اللہ ما بعد يقول الله في كتاب الكريم والفرقان الحميد وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم صدق الله العلي العظيم صل على محمد وآل محمد The subject concerning mental health lessons from Karbala is a subject that we need to analyze and evaluate. As we all know, Karbala is not only a historical tragedy or a historical account, but it is a place where we learn a plethora of lessons. Therefore, what does Karbala teach us about mental health? Before we commence, I request you all to recite aloud salawat. So what is the definition of mental health? Mental health refers to the emotional, psychological and social well-being of a human being. It affects how one acts, how one behaves, how one deals with those around him, how one copes with stresses, how one manages to deal with daily stresses of life. So why is it important to have adequate mental health? Number one, you actualize your full potential. When you are mentally sound, when you are mentally stable, you are able to actualize your true potential. Number one, you can cope with the stresses of life. As we all know, it's 2021. There are many stresses that we face on a daily basis, whether you are a student or whether you are an employee or whether you are an employer. There are a number of stresses that people encounter on a daily basis. Number three, you need a positive mental health. Why? To work productively. When you are employed by an organization, they expect you to be efficient, to be productive. Number four, to contribute, to give back to the society. Now imagine you are not mentally sound, you have a mental illness. Can you really contribute? Can you really give back to the society? Now these are a few statistics about Tanzania. Mental health in Tanzania, shocking statistics. Salu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Approximately 2.5 million people in Tanzania suffer from mental illnesses. 2.5 million people. These are recorded statistics. Now there are more, but these are the ones that are documented. 20% of them have access to mental health services. Only 20%. 80% are left without meeting a psychologist, a psychiatrist. There are 900 psychiatric beds in the entire country. We are a population of how many? Ya Allah. Okay, 45, 50 million. Some say 60. Let's say 45 million. We only have 900 psychiatric beds. There is only one mental health hospital in the entire country in Dodoma. Furthermore, amongst 100,000 inhabitants, we only have access to 0 0.04 psychiatrists. That's the disproportion that we see in our country. Therefore, it's something that we need to work towards to enhance the mental health, well-being of our society. Today, we will discuss three steps to enhance one's own mental well-being and how these relate to the tragedy of Karbala. Karbala, I repeat once again, is not only a historical tragedy. It is a university. We learn a plethora of lessons from Karbala. Number one, Step number one, to enhance your mental health. Of course, I'm not saying you don't meet a psychologist or psychiatrist. That's primary. That's key. But these are additional ways where you can enhance your own mental well-being. Number one, connect with other people. Connect with good, positive people. At-Tabari, a Sunni scholar within his book, Tariq, volume 6, page 241, narrates an event that occurred on the day of Ashura. Burair bin Khudair, a companion of Imam al Hussein, he started joking with a man by the name of Abdul Rahman al Ansari, another companion of Imam Hussein. He started saying something humorous, something in jest. So Abdul Rahman al Ansari looked towards Burair 
and said, Oh, Murey, do you know what will transpire today? I will be killed, you will be killed, and you are smiling. Why? This is what Murey says. My people know very well that I never liked indolence. I never liked humor during my entire life. But today I feel a sense of happiness, a sense of peace, because I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward me. So Burair, a positive influence, telling Abdul Rahman al Ansari, do not worry. We are going to be rewarded by the Lord for sacrificing our lives. You open any maktal, any book on Karbala, you will never see a single book that says that there was dissension or disunity amongst Imam Hussein's forces. Never. You open several books, you see disunity amongst Yazid's forces, fights, internal arguments, dissension. Imam Hussein's army, there were few. Yet you will see no arguments, no dissension, no disunity. Why? Because all positive people, they connected with one another. Furthermore, a lot of people think that it is only Hur who went towards Imam Hussein. No. There are others from the camp of Amr ibn Saad who joined the rank of Imam Hussein. So Hur, he was having an internal battle. These are the worst. When you go through inner turmoil, very difficult. He was thinking, he asked Omar ibn Sa'ad, are you planning to kill the grandson of the Prophet? He said, yes. He said, but why don't you let him go? Omar ibn Sa'ad said, I want to let him go. But the governor says, I can't. Therefore, I have to follow and adhere to the command of the governor. Okay. Now, Hur bin Yazid al-Riyahi, internal battle, fighting with himself. A man by the name of Qurra bin Qais Handali. Remember this name, Qurra bin Qais Handali. He comes to Hur. He says, if anyone asks me who is the toughest man in Kufa, I would say it is you. And you are in this situation. Hur, the narrations point out that he was shivering. There were chills in his vein. He was so frightened. Hur, continuously in contemplation, reflecting. Then a man by the name of Al-Muhajir. Al-Muhajir al aws Al He was giving water to his horses. Hur said, I feel ashamed that you are giving water to your horses while children are crying of thirst. So this internal battle continues. Then Al-Muhajir said, are you planning to go to Hussein? Hur said, yes, because this is a path between heaven and hell. I am either in heaven or I am in hell. I am in the pits of hell. So Hur said, I will go to Imam Hussein. So Hur bin Yazid al he goes towards Abba Abdullah. Then Hur says, oh Imam, Oh Imam, do you forgive me? This is what Imam says. Imam says, Allah will accept your repentance and you will have a great deal of good deeds and you will be well rewarded. So the Imam doesn't say, Oh Hur, you are responsible for all this. You stop my children from drinking water. No, the Imam replies in a positive manner. You come to me, you leave negativity, you come to positivity, I will treat you positively as well. This is recorded by Sheikh al saduq in his book Al-Amali, page number 97. And in Al-Luhuf as well, this narration. Now, Qurra bin Qais Hamdali is a messenger of Omar ibn Sa'ad, spokesperson. Communi you can say somewhat like a communications director. This man also, Qurra bin Qais, when he hears children crying, he also leaves Omar ibn Sa'ad and joins Imam al Hussein. And he says, I leave the camp of negativity and I join the camp of positivity. Because he knew when I connect with these people, it will be good for my mental health. Therefore, connect with good people, connect with positive people. Salu ala nabi. Now, what if my entire life I have not been a good human being, I have committed sins? Is there hope for me? Allah says, even if you contemplate that, then that is a sin. Even if you think Allah will not forgive me, that is the greatest sin. Allah says in Surah 39, verse number 53, Surah Zumar. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Those who have transgressed against their souls, those who have committed sins or injustice against themselves, do not worry. Do not despair the mercy of Allah. Allah forgives all sins. Surely Allah is غفور and Rahim. Allah is oft forgiving, not forgiving, oft forgiving. He often forgives and he is often merciful. In another verse within the Holy Quran, Surah 12, verse 87, Surah Yusuf, Allah says, وَلَا تَأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يَأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمَ الْكَافِرُونَ Oh my sons, Yaqub tells 
His children go and look for Yusuf. And do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah. No, do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Only the infidels lose mercy in the hope of Allah. Therefore, do not ever lose hope. You may contemplate that I want to end my life. I do not want to live anymore. I am struggling in terms of finance. I am struggling in terms of my health. But Allah says in the Quran, no, do not worry. Do not despair of relief from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another ayah, Allah says, سَيَجْعَلُ اللَّهُ بَعْدَ عُسْرِ yusra." Allah brings about ease after difficulty. Therefore, you will undergo trials and tribulations. But Allah makes a promise that I will give you ease after difficulty. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So connect with others. Volunteer. Take part. Partake in volunteering activities. Take part, for example, in going to orphanages, visit cancer institutes, sit with your family, discuss with your family, talk with your friends. That's number one. Connect with others in order to improve your mental health. Number two, be yourself. Recognize yourself. The Bhagavad Gita is an ancient Hindu scripture. It is basically an advice from Krishna to Arjun. So Krishna Arjun is having an inner turmoil, an inner battle. That should I partake in this battle? Should I fight in this battle? It's my own family that I need to go against. So Krishna acts as a mentor, as a guide. And he instructs Arjun. Now listen to this beautiful quote from the Bhagavad Gita. It says in chapter 3, verse number 35. It is far better to discharge one's prescribed duties, even though faultily, than another one's duties perfectly. Destruction in the course of performing one's own duty is better than engaging in another's duties. For to follow another's path is dangerous. Therefore, discharge your own duties. Perform your own tasks rather than follow the path of another human being. Because that path may be a dangerous one, may be a lethal one. So Krishna tells Arjun, recognize yourself, be yourself. So I'll give you a few examples. A man by the name of Amr bin Qarza al-Ansari, another Sahaba of Imam Hussein on the day of Ashura. These enemies were showering arrows on Imam Hussein. So this man, Amr bin Qarza al-Ansari, comes forward, defends Imam Hussein, puts his own chest forward and takes arrows to defend Imam Hussein. He lay on the plains of Karbala. Imam Hussein approaches Amr bin Qarza and he says, O oh Amr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for defending me. So Amr bin Qarza passes away whilst defending Imam Hussein. On the other hand, his brother, he was on the camp of Yazid. He was in Umar bin Sa'ad's camp, two members of the same family fighting on opposite ends. Of course, his brother passes away. He gets emotional. He says, O oh, Imam, O oh, Hussein, you have killed my brother. You are the one responsible to kill my brother. You misguided him. This is what Imam Hussein says. Imam Hussein says, I did not deceive your brother, for Allah is the one who guided your brother. Allah is the one who guided your brother. Now this man comes towards Hussein, wanting to kill him, but a man by the name of Nafi bin Hilal al-Jamali intercepted another companion of Imam and stopped him and stabbed him. But imagine, two members of the same family, he was injured, fatally injured. Two members of the same family, yet one recognized himself, one found his innate nature, the other fought his conscience. The other one, he knew that I am going to kill innocent lives. Yet he continued shunning his conscience. He said, no, it's fine. It's okay. The other one said, no, I, with my conscience, will go to Imam al Hussein for I recognize it is the path of truthfulness and justice. Salam ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. <laughs> Bibi Sakina. Bibi Sakina. There are narrations that point out she herself. How much did Bibi Sakina go through? Right? Yet the narrations tell us that whenever Bibi Sakina saw any lady crying, any woman crying or any child crying, she would go and hug that woman and say, do not cry, do not cry, do not worry. This is called love. This is called being good to other human beings. Number two, recognize yourself, be yourself in order to improve your mental well-being. Number three, and my final point before I end my talk, it is okay to cry. 
You know, many times we are told that men do not need to cry. Men do not cry. Real men don't weep. They don't wail. But when you come to Majlis al Hussein, we annihilate that toxic masculinity trait that men do not cry. All of us cry for Imam Hussein, men and women. This is interesting. In the 1990s, there was a poet called Robert Bly. He would organize seminars where he would start making men connect with their own emotions and feelings. He would make sure that these men, while they leave the seminars, they cry so that they connect with their own feelings. They connect with their emotions. When you come to Majlis al Hussein and you cry for Imam Hussein, what are you doing? You are connecting with your feelings. You are connecting with your own nature and emotions. If you open the Bible, Gospel of John chapter 11 verse 35, Jesus Christ cried for his friend Lazarus. Of course, he later on resurrected Lazarus, but he wept for Lazarus. In the Bible, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5 verse 4, it says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. So when you cry, when you mourn, you will be comforted. And I end my talk with this analogy. When a baby is born, how do you know that that baby is a functioning baby, an active baby? How? Ahsan, Brother Ali Asghar answer. Salu ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. In order to recognize that the baby born is active, is alive, is well, is the baby crying or not? That's where the doctor says the baby is well and good. Therefore, there is no problem in crying. So I end my talk. Number one, in order to improve your mental well-being, what's number one? I think only Brother Ali Asghar has listened to my talk. Okay, number one, connect with others. Number two, Ya Allah, short memory span, huh? Number two, recognize yourself. Number three, I just mentioned it. It's okay to cry. Ahsan Dr. Asnain, Salu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Therefore, to know whether or not a baby is alive, you see, is the baby crying or not? However, there was one baby on the day of Ashura crying for water. Dushman Hussain, Khali Dushman Hussain nahi hai. Ye insaniyat se bhi bahar hai. Varna ek chhe mahine ka bachcha, teen din ka piyasa, Hussain ne kaha, shayad tum samajhte hai, ke mein khud paani peena chahta hoon, bachche ka naam sirf istemal kar raha hoon. Tu mujhe paani doge, mein peenun ga, nahi. Shab-e Ashur, har khaymeh mein har bibi, qurbani ke liye tayyar hai. Khush bhi hai, ایسی مائیں آپ کو دنیا میں کہیں نہیں ملیں گے کربلا کے سوا کہ خوش ہے کہ ان کی چاند جیسے بیٹے کل میدان میں شہید ہوں گے اور سب مارے جائیں گے ہاں لیکن صرف ایک خیمے ہے جہاں حسین نے رونے کی آواز سنی زینب خوش فروہ خوش لیلہ خوش ہر ایک ماں خوش ہے حسین نے دیکھا ایک خیمہ یہ کہ خیمہ کس کا ہے یہ تو رباب کا خیمہ ہے رباب کی خیمے سے رونے کی آواز آ رہی ہے حسین نے دیکھا کہ رباب ازغر کے جھولے پر سر رکھے رو رہی ہے حسین رباب کے خیمے میں داخل ہوئے رباب کیا بات ہے کیوں رو رہی ہے کہا نہیں آقا میں تو اپنی بدقسمتی پہ رو رہی ہوں کل کے لئے ہر بی بی اپنی اپنی قربانی کی تیاری کر رہی ہے یہ قیامت کے دن شہزادی فاطمہ کے سامنے کیسے جاؤں گی دو اولادیں تو اللہ نے دی لیکن دونوں میں سے ایک بھی جہاد کے قابل نہیں ہے حسین نے فرمایا رباب آپ سمجھ رہی ہے آپ کے اولاد کیسے جہاد کرے ارے آپ کے اولاد ایسا جہاد کرے گی کہ کربلا کے سارے جہاد پیچھے رہ جائے گی اور آپ کی سکینہ شام کے قید خانے میں تماشے کھا کھا کے ایسا جہاد کرے گی کہ نام یزید قیامت تک کے لئے مٹ جائے گا سکینہ کا جہاد شام اصغر کا جہاد کربلا اگلا دن آیا ایک ایک شہید ہوئے 
आखिर वो वक्त आया हुसैन अकेले रह गए अब्बास मारे गए अकबर मारे गए कासिम मारे गए एक मर्तबा हुसैन ने फरमाया हल मिन्ना हल मिन मुगी सुना कोई है मेरी मदद करने वाला जवाब तो नहीं आया खेमे से बीबियों के रोने की आवाज आने लगी हुसैन खेमे में गए जैनब क्या बात है अभी मैं जिंदा हूं तो क्यों रो रहे हो कहा भैया तूने कहा हल मिन्ना असगर ने अपने आप को झूले से जमीन पे गिरा दिया शायद शायद असगर ये कह रहा हो बाबा अभी आपका एक नासिर जिंदा है जब तक आपका असगर है हल मिन नासिर न कहना हुसैन असगर को ले गए हुसैन ने लश्कर यजीद से कहा तुम में साहिब औलाद भी है मेरा ये बच्चा तीन दिन से प्यासा है इसकी माँ का दूध भी सूख चुका है अरे हो सके तो उसे चंद कतरे पानी तो दे दो फिर जमीन में भी लिटाया और फिर दोबारा गोद में उठा के एक जुमला कहा असगर बेटा मेरी बात ये नहीं समझ रहे हैं तुम तो हुज्जत खुदा का पोता है ना तुम खुद अपनी हुज्जत तमाम करो बस इतना कहना था असगर ने नन्नी सी जबान निकाली अब अमर बिन साद परेशान हो गए दौड़ के आया हुरमला बिन काहिन से कहा हुरमला तू मेरे फौज के सबसे बड़ा तीर अंदाज है इकता कलाम हुसैन ए हुरमला तू अरब का सबसे बड़ा तीर अंदाज है तो हुसैन के कलम को तमाम कर दे एक बार हुरमला ने अपने तीर देखे एक भाल का तीर था दो भाल के तीर भी थे तीन भाल का तीर भी था अरब में एक आम आदमी की गर्दन तोड़ने के लिए एक बाल का तीर ही काफी है और अगर घोड़े की गर्दन तोड़ना हो तो तीन भाल का तीर जरूरी है अरे कहा घोड़े की गर्दन और कहा शमश असगर का नन्ना सा सूखा गला हुरमला ने तीन भाल का तीर निकाला अपनी कमान में लगाया कमान में खींचना चाहता है हाथ कांपे तीरों कमान फिर गिर गया दोबारा कोशिश की जब तीसरी दफा तीर न फेंका गया तो उसका करीबी दोस्त सनान फरमाया ए हुरमला अगर मुझसे पूछते हैं अरब अरब का सबसे बड़ा तीर अंदाज कौन है तो मैं तेरा नाम लूंगा एक नन्हे बच्चे से डर गया तीर नहीं फेंका जा रहा है हुरमला ने कहा बच्चे की बात नहीं है इधर थीर फेंकना चाहता हूं खेमे का पर्दा इस तरह हिलता है जैसे बच्चे की माँ खेमे के दरवाजे पे खड़ी है अरे माँ की आंखों के सामने उसके लाल को कैसे मार सकते इन्ना लिल्लाह व इन्ना इलैहि राजिऊन मातम हुसैन या हुसैन